people want the Hurt Business back in some way, shape, or form in WWE. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, that seemingly will never happen ever again after the news yesterday that broke that saw Bobby Lashley's WWE contract coming to an end this summer and him walking away from World Wrestling Entertainment. Not only will Bobby Lashley be walking away from WWE, but MVP will also be walking away from WWE. And this is the latest news to come out of the company that has fans in an uproar, already blaming Triple H and already crying racism in regards to Triple H and how the WWE fumbled the Hurt Business and how Triple H fumbled Bobby Lashley. We will go over everything that's been reported, why Bobby Lashley is walking away, and why the narrative that's being pushed on social media in regards to Triple H being racist or this having any problems with race is absolute bullshit. So we will go over that today on a loaded episode of Off the Scripts. Bobby Lashley's WWE contract is coming to an end, and Fightful, along with Sean Ross Sapp, has learned that former world champion Bobby Lashley's WWE contract is up within the next month or so, possibly over the course of weeks. Now, social media account PWN, I don't know where these guys came from as a reputable news source, but regardless, PWN learned that Bobby Lashley was removed from the internal roster page, though he is still featured on the company's website. And Fightful was also able to confirm this news. Lashley's been out of action for a number of months, and sources have told Fightful that he plans on continuing wrestling if for some reason an extension is not reached within the WWE. The latest that I read this morning on Monday was that WWE did indeed offer Bobby Lashley a new contract, but he was less than enthused with the offer that was made to him. Lashley has not been factored into WWE creative plans since the spring. He's wrestled five televised matches this year and won at WrestleMania in April. Though we haven't heard of specific aspirations to continue fighting as of late MMA, Fightful was told by those close to him that it isn't out of the realm of possibility and that he told Fightful in the past, if the situation is right and presented itself, that he would entertain it again. Now, Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, said this. Again, please take it with a grain of salt because the old man's been more wrong than right this year, but I do think that this is important to the topic of discussion. I know that there is talk of them trying to get into AEW. It's one of those things where technically nobody can talk to them because I don't believe either's contract has expired, Bobby Lashley and MVP. But their contracts are going to expire and they are at this point, as things stand right now, WWE is under the assumption that they are gone and that they are going to try to revamp the Hurt Business in AEW. I don't know if they'll use that name or not. I guess it depends on the ownership of the name. They want to get Shelton Benjamin, who is also a free agent, who a lot of people backstage, from what I understand, have been pushing AEW to sign Sh Shelton Benjamin and revamp the group in AEW. Whether this happens or not, it solely depends on Tony Khan. But it's definitely something that is under consideration. I don't think it's a done deal or anything like that, but it's something that is certainly alive. But as of right now, Bobby Lashley and MVP are both gone from the WWE when their contract expires, which is relatively soon, says Dave Meltzer. Keep that AEW thing in mind. MVP has been very vocal about the way he feels Triple H has run the company and... He is placing blame, a lot of the blame, on Triple H for not creatively getting the Hurt Business back to television the way that he wanted. Now, I look at this as a disgruntled aging veteran that doesn't really fit into the narrative that WWE is going for nowadays. WWE is going more youthful. WWE is going more wrestling heavy. WWE is solely focusing on long-term stories. MVP and where he sits right now currently do not fit into the WWE machine. So I don't know why we automatically need to go to the race card, but that's what MVP has done. Now, I want to read just a little bit of history here for you guys to give you guys the full context of what's going on here because it's all very important to what I'm going to say after the stories that I read to you. WWE 
obviously dissolved the Hurt Business, or I should say Vince McMahon dissolved the Hurt Business. MVP was Bobby Lashley's manager. MVP established the Hurt Business as a faction with the additions of Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander on Raw. This was back in 2020. Bobby Lashley went on to win the United States Championship. Shelton and Cedric briefly went on to win the Raw Tag Team titles. But not long after Lashley captured the WWE title in 2021, he ejected both men from the group, proceeding with MVP as his manager through tease reunions that never lasted until the group split, with MVP then aligning with Omas. MVP recently reminisced over the group on Instagram, prompting some replies calling for them to reunite, asking where it all went wrong, and suggesting he continue the brand with Lashley and the Street Profits. To that particular idea, he replied, absolutely not. Elaborating elsewhere, if it ain't the original, it ain't with me. Now, MVP also addressed the idea that Vince McMahon was the one who put the end to the Hurt Business, noting that Triple H could have reunited the group when he took over creative. He says, and I quote, and his son-in-law never put it back together. Adding that there were lackluster reunions in the years since, and you know who did that. Several other replies from MVP indicated that the idea was pitched to Triple H, but he rejected it, mentioning that he'd want Benjamin re-signed, but the current regime didn't want to go in that direction. MVP also suggested racial connotations were at play when it came to the Hurt Business being left on the scrap heap. One comment had pointed to the infamous promo exchange between Triple H and Booker T during the 2000s where he said to his challenger that people like him don't get to be champion and are only there to make people like himself laugh. Whether or not that was intended to be racist, I mean, that's a Vince McMahon era where shit like that flew all the time. Many took that promo to be racist and really put that on Triple H for the way he usually acts and creates this narrative that that's the way Triple H is. MVP agreed with the reference, further saying you see it when one user said that Triple H... And the Triple H administration is emasculating black men, which is completely just a bullshit narrative that I'll discuss in a second. I want to read to you this one final piece. It comes from Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan's not the only one that stated this. Nia Jack stated it. Randy Orton stated it. Kevin Owens stated it. Cody Rhodes has stated it. The entire locker room feels this same exact way, which is completely the polar opposite of what MVP is trying to depict with the Triple H administration, Liv Morgan was recently interviewed and she mentions how surreal it's been to work with someone she grew up idolizing, how amazing it's been to work with Triple H behind the curtain and how open-minded Triple H has been when he makes everything that much more beneficial. He's so helpful with any questions, Liv Morgan says, that when I have anything, I'm thinking he's always open to listen and to help me out. I couldn't be more grateful for that. I walk into work so excited every single week to see what type of shenanigans we're going to get into. It's a very happy, very open, creative atmosphere that I think all my coworkers appreciate as well. It's been nothing short of an amazing and fun run. So I'm looking forward to showing up to work this Monday and seeing what we're going to get into. So watch us, end quote. Social media is an absolute fucking hellhole. It, it is a complete shit show. You have people on social media doing absolutely nothing but spewing false narratives for the sake of engagement farming for a 50 to $100 paycheck from Elon. That's exactly what they're doing. I'm reading all this, and I see Triple H fumbled Hurt Business. Triple H fumbled Bobby Lashley. WWE, they dropped the ball on Hurt Business. WWE missed an opportunity with the Hurt Business versus the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, and the Bloodline. Now, all of that with the Bloodline may be true, but did WWE really fumble the ball on Bobby Lashley? Did they? This is a two-time WWE champion, a two-time WWE Intercontinental champion, and a two-time WWE United States champion. Where exactly did they fumble the ball with Bobby Lashley? As far as I know, from my very short memory, Bobby Lashley's second run in WWE eclipsed both his first WWE run and his TNA run. So where exactly did they drop the ball with Bobby Lashley? I don't really understand that. If 
you guys want to pin the blame on why the Hurt Business isn't on television, maybe you should look at Vince McMahon and not put the blame solely on Triple H. I'll get to Triple H in a second, but let's go back to at least a year and a half ago. Bobby Lashley was supposed to wrestle Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. That was the intended match. That match never took place at WrestleMania because WWE could not get on the same page. Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar could not get on the same page creatively. The matches before that WrestleMania match, that rumored WrestleMania match, were awful. Every single aspect about those matches were god-awful. So Vince McMahon went in a different direction. Yes, Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon moved away from Lesnar and Lashley. Vince McMahon then went into different directions. He put Bobby Lashley against Bray Wyatt. That was the rumor for WrestleMania. Remember the muscle man dance that was that storyline. And then Brock Lesnar versus Omas. Gee, I wonder if it takes that much effort to figure out who the fuck booked those matches. For everybody that wants to really push the Triple H narrative that he fumbled, Vince McMahon, he was still very much a part of WrestleMania 39. His DNA was a lot still involved with WrestleMania 39. That's an aspect that people seemingly want to ignore to push their own narrative. After WrestleMania that year, where did we go? Bobby Lashley was given the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. He looked like a fool carrying around that big trophy out on WrestleMania night two, and then he had to show up with it on Monday Night Raw. They had zero creative. You guys remember the Raw after WrestleMania, right? You know, the one Vince McMahon absolutely fucking destroyed. One of the worst WWE programs in the history of the entire program. That Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania 39. Vince took a dump on it, and he did not look back. He destroyed the entire show. What did Bobby Lashley do for the remainder of 2023? He feuded with Austin Theory, the same guy he was feuding with during his prior United States Championship run. Once again, back to feuding with Austin Theory, and that happened through most of the summer, going into the fall of 2023. No, but I'm sure Triple H is to blame for that one, too. Vince McMahon was still largely a shadow over the WWE creative process. It was up until November, December, where Triple H finally took over because the documentary that we saw, the WrestleMania documentary, Triple H was stating that WrestleMania, WrestleMania 40 was largely completed, 80% completed, until things started to unravel with the injuries and the Vince McMahon lawsuit and changes had to be made and the whole Cody dilemma with The Rock. Triple H didn't fully take over until November, That's when we start to see CM Punk back into the creative plans and them building towards Punk and Rollins. Vince McMahon was not gone until that point. So if you want to blame someone on the Bobby Lashley ball being fumbled, you got Vince McMahon to look at. If you guys want someone to blame on why the Hurt Business failed in WWE, you can look at Vince McMahon and put the fucking narrative that Triple H is the one to blame and bury that shit, man. Put it to bed. That narrative doesn't exist. Vince killed the Hurt Business. By the time the Hurt Business reunion talks got started again, Cedric Alexander was left for dead creatively. And then Shelton Benjamin was eventually released and MVP was strapped with Omos as his manager. Again, another Vince move. You guys remember what they did with Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander as a tag team? Nobody wants to remember those fucking terrible matches. They, I mean, they got thrown out on Monday Night Raw to basically be fucking... Chop meat for everybody in that fucking division. No, but I'm sure everybody forgot about that conveniently to push their fucking narratives. A lot of you guys put too much stock in the Hurt Business within the WWE. Vince never largely pushed black, prominent athletes. He always saw Cedric Alexander as a mid-card guy, lower-card guy, never mind a mid-card guy. He always looked at Shelton Benjamin as a lower-card guy. And again, like I said, everybody fails to remember what the Hurt Business was In WWE, when they started to break them up and what Vince started to do with them all individually. Lashley is pushing 49 years old. Maybe he just wants out. Did anybody ever think about that? Here's a little fucking nugget of information for you. If Bobby Lashley is walking away on his own, Bobby Lashley wants to seek employment elsewhere. Bobby Lashley wants to seek opportunity elsewhere. Why does it need to end up being 
oh, Bobby Lashley's leaving WWE. They dropped the ball. Let's use the race card as a reason why he's leaving. I don't really understand. I don't really understand this narrative. You guys realize that there will be both AEW and WWE talents that eventually jump ship because they want to go to the other company. Bobby Lashley and MVP are just a couple of people that it will happen to. They are not the last. And the same thing applies to AEW. I could see Wardlow and Ricky Starks and Malachi and Miro, Buddy Matthews, Keith Lee. I could see all of them going back to WWE at some point or another in the next couple of years. Why does this, why does it lead to tribalism? I don't really understand it. I don't get it. Bobby Lashley is 49 years old. In the midst of a youth movement within WWE, do you genuinely feel that Bobby Lashley looks at the landscape of WWE and finds a spot for himself? I don't. Why would he want to stay there? Look at what they did with him, man. The only thing I will nail Triple H on is the Karrion Cross and Final Testament feud with the Street Profits. It went nowhere. The pride never got off its feet because it never felt natural. It felt like a forced, put-together group. The feud with the Final Testament never went anywhere because they was never given a reason. We were never given a reason as to why they were feuding. They had no direction at all. It was merely carrying across a big guy versus Bobby Lashley, a big guy, and it materialized into nothing. You can blame Triple H for that, but that is a fucking morsel of the problem compared to everything else that I just previously mentioned. He's 49 years old. Don't you think he thinks to himself, well, I don't fit here. Don't you think WWE is thinking he's 49 years old? I mean, I think we kind of expended everything we could. We squeezed that lemon out of Bobby Lashley as much as we could. Maybe it's time to let him go somewhere. You know, for the amount of money that Bobby Lashley is probably commanding for someone of his size and someone of his star power, WWE can sign three or four fucking recruitments uh, or, or recruits down in NXT for that money and invest into the youth with that type of money. Why do we need to give Bobby Lashley at 49 years, years old another three-year contract to stay with WWE so he collects a fucking paycheck and then remains unhappy at the end of his contract, which will land him at 52 years old? Does anybody in, in either party want that? No, I, I don't think so. MVP, he immediately jumped to the conclusion that this was all racism after the reports of the roster being more unified have come out week over week over week over week. The MVP situation sounds like nothing more than a disgruntled aging veteran that was also pissed off with the previous administration that the new administration didn't find anything for else anything else for him to do. They strapped him with Omos in the previous administration. What the fuck do you expect Triple H to do with that? I understand that it could have worked out. I mean, I could have found things with, with MVP for MVP to do. I would have straddled him with Jade Cargill. I mean, it's not that difficult to find someone like MVP a spot on television. I could have given him a role with Carmelo Hayes. Give him Carmelo Hayes and have MVP be Carmelo Hayes manager. Something. Or have him go down to NXT and lead one of the young guys. Was he even open to that? I don't know. I don't know. They seemingly have this hurt business narrative in mind, and that's the only thing that they want to focus on. They believe so fondly in this that they want to push this elsewhere, which is a great mentality to have, man. If you believe in something so so vehemently, then go do it. It's not going to happen in WWE, though. But the MVP using the racism card, that's just a crutch to gain sympathy points from the rest of the fucking moronic trolls on social media. We don't know the entire story with Bobby Lashley. We don't know the entire story with MVP. Maybe creative just couldn't get it done. I mean, do you want to see the Hurt Business back in WWE after they completely destroyed the original group? Do you want to see the Hurt Business back under a forced narrative on WWE television? Do you want it to come together and feel forced, not like the original? Why do you want that? If it's not going to resemble or feel like the original, why are you going to force something on television that's not even, that's not even going to come close to the original project that you had in mind for all these guys? I, I don't understand that. At that point, you might as well just scrap the entire fucking idea and move in a completely different direction. Maybe creative couldn't come together. Maybe Lashley wanted something else. Maybe MVP wanted something else. Maybe WWE wanted something completely different than both Bobby Lashley and MVP. But no, it's race. It's racism. Why the Hurt Business isn't back on WWE television. So where does Bobby Lashley go? Clearly, Bobby Lashley's walking away from WWE. 
Bobby Lashley going to AEW is something that is of great interest. But do I personally want to see Bobby Lashley in AEW? No, I don't. You're just going to add to the narrative of them hiring ex-WWE guys to take spots away from the AEW talent pool. Isn't that narrative tired already? Do you really want to become the WWE, ex-WWE landfill? I know I wouldn't. Why do you need that? If they do end up in AEW, I could see Shelton Benjamin being signed. I could see Bobby Lashley and MVP coming in. I could see when Will Hobbs gets back from injury, he joins the Hurt Business. Imagine a Hurt Business of Bobby Lashley, MVP, Shelton Benjamin, and Powerhouse Hobbs. Imagine that version of the Hurt Business going up against the Blackpool Combat Club or the House of Black or the Bullet Club. I mean, the interest in that would be great. And I think given some creative freedom in AEW, they would really turn it into something that they've always envisioned. So the idea and the prospect of that is certainly there, but I feel like there's more cons than pros in that situation. Or maybe we just get Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin in TNA, and we have Bobby Lashley return to his roots where he's got a lot of history, and he joins TNA, which right now they're undergoing some sort of renaissance with this partnership with WWE. There's more interest in the product now than there ever has been in the last 10, 15 years. So if Bobby Lashley was to land in TNA, I think that would be the best move for him. Imagine Bobby Lashley versus PCO. Bobby Lashley versus Mike Santana. Bobby Lashley versus Josh Alexander. Bobby Lashley versus Alex Hammerstone. Bobby Lashley versus fucking Moose. Bobby Lashley versus Ali. Bobby Lashley versus Nick Nemeth. Bobby Lashley versus Joe Hendry. You know, the list goes on and on. I, I don't know why. Bobby Lashley versus Speedball, Mike Bailey. Imagine the fucking possibilities of Bobby Lashley healthy in TNA again where he's got a lot of history. I don't understand this. I don't understand the tribalism. I don't understand the narrative that race is involved. I don't understand the blame on Triple H. A lot of all of this, a lot of this falls into the lap of, of Vince McMahon. Bobby Lashley was injured through most of this WWE run with Triple H leading the charge. Why are we jumping to conclusions here? For all we know, Bobby Lashley is leaving on his own merits. He's leaving on his own terms. He's going to go seek more money and employment elsewhere. Anybody would be lucky to have Bobby Lashley. And wherever Bobby Lashley goes, I'm sure MVP will follow. But this narrative on social media that they dropped the ball, they did this, race is included, how could they? They fumbled. Stop reading the dirt from these mindless, idiotic, moronic trolls who do nothing but want a cheap payday from fucking Twitter. It's not going to pay the bills, and they end up looking like fucking retards at the end of the day anyway. Stop. I hate it. One thing I love is to make people really think about what the fuck they're saying. Bobby Lashley seems healthy. Bobby Lashley seems motivated. And he still seems, obviously, he's in great shape. He's probably in better shape now at 48 years old than he ever has been. Anybody would be lucky to have Bobby Lashley. And no matter where he goes, he's going to find success wherever he goes. And you, as a fan, may end up getting Bobby Lashley the way that you always envisioned or the way that you wanted in WWE. So why is this a bad thing? The creative outlets that possibly could be now with Bobby Lashley leaving WWE, they are now bountiful. There is a lot that could possibly happen. Why are we stuck on WWE dropping the ball on Bobby Lashley? If anything, they're letting Bobby Lashley go and we're going to get a better Bobby Lashley than we ever seen in 2024 going into 2025. Stop the bullshit. We don't know what happened. It doesn't call for race or the discussion of race. And a lot of what happened here with Bobby Lashley and the Hurt Business falls on the lap of Vince McMahon. Stop blaming, stop placing the blame on the current administration when the current administration is trying to fucking continue to fix the mess that the previous one had started. And one other thing before I get the fuck out of here. The idea of race in this topic of discussion in regards to the current administration, whether it's Triple H or Shawn Michaels, Jade Cargill was brought in with such star power, with such flair, that everybody found it to be nauseating. That doesn't really resemble the work of a racist. 
Bianca Belair has been one of the brightest stars in the WWE Women's Division since she got started in NXT. Gee, I wonder who ran NXT the time Bianca Belair got started. Was that Triple H? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Nia Jax. She is also being pushed to the WWE Women's Championship. She's been a star for that division since she was brought back. What about everybody in NXT that got called out? What about Carmelo Hayes? He's slated to be a future piece of the company. What about Obafemi? What about Trick Williams, who was just the NXT World Champion? What about Wes Lee? What about Keith Lee, who was in NXT under the previous administration on Black and Gold? Ricochet! The list goes on and on. So you want to cry racism in regards to this current administration, but you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. Every time someone leaves the fucking company, it's got to be about fucking race. Maybe it's because they want to seek employment elsewhere because there's better opportunity elsewhere. It has nothing to do with the fucking race card narrative that you're pushing. I don't understand this. I really don't. As a fan, looking, other, looking at other fans act the way that they do, it's pathetic. It makes me fucking physically ill. It makes me sad that I have to use social media as a platform to help my other platforms grow. Nobody thinks. They immediately want to place the blame and go to something that they know will garner sympathy and discussion and engagement farm. And it couldn't be any further from the truth. Stop. Bobby Lashley will be fine. Guys, thank you very much for all your support. If you did enjoy today's video... I want you to sound off in the comment section below. Please let me know what you think of all this Bobby Lashley story down below. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. And please go check out all the other videos on the channel. Plenty of content with more coming this week. We will be live most of this week. Make sure you guys have those notifications turned on as always. And please follow me on social media at JD from NY206. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Guys, until then, I will see you tonight live for Monday Night Raw. I'll see you guys later.